Okay, hello everyone. Welcome to my talk on software update for Zephyr today. And thank you very much for joining. And um, to get started with uh, this topic, software update is, uh, is the most essential component uh, of any software development cycle because today uh, when we deploy uh, X version of a software into the field and then we see bug fixes in the later stage or fixing things in the security level or changes in terms of security. Then we update the software um, over the air from remote um, by managing the devices remotely as like managing the devices remotely. So how things will happen uh, in terms of software update in Zephyr is the thing is the primary consideration of this particular talk. So let's get started. So firstly, a little bit about myself. I myself, Parthiban, uh, working as a software engineer for Linumis. Uh, at Linumis or myself do um, most of the consideration in development of uh, embedded Linux, uh, varying from board bring up, uh, U-boot kernel development uh, and consulting and the Octo development related things as uh, in terms of Linux kernel for uh, uh, custom board bring up or for development platforms uh, for various customers. And also development of uh, Zephyr um, recently in various customer platforms as well as board bring up and various consulting as well. So I myself uh, live in Berlin uh, working for Linux, but uh, our people who with Linux are mostly distributed across different parts of the world already. So to get started, um, this is our today's agenda about software update in Zephyr. So as a whole part, this talk is actually split into two uh, major parts, like um, usually, uh, like uh, systems in uh, Linux, like uh, uh, software agent in Linux, like SW Update or Mender, uh, does the operation of software update by downloading the image and as well as installing uh, into the primary storage medium, like NAND Flash or EMMC or ST uh, accordingly. So the whole operation of downloading and installing the image is completely carried out by the software update agent in terms of Linux. but. But in terms of uh, when it comes to Zephyr or the microcontroller platform here we're speaking about, this operation is actually split between uh, two different layers, I would say. So that's how the talk is actually split. So the download part is actually handled by the application software, which is actually run on top of Zephyr, uh, which is like there are available solutions like Update Hub or some available solutions like MCMGR and so on. And the installation part or the main part of installation is actually carried out by the MCU boot. That's like a bootloader for the Zephyr platform. So this talk will speak about the MCU boot in detail about how it is gonna install the software from the storage medium, which is downloaded. And then the second part of the talk will explain in detail and also we I have some uh, couple of demonstration to show based on a development board uh, how to download the software into the uh, into the memory storage uh, using various mechanisms or various uh, things which uh, possible solutions which is available with the Zephyr today and also we discuss some future works uh, which are planned for the next uh, step so let's get started so MCU boot is actually the secure bootloader for Zephyr and uh, Minute, Apache Minute real-time operating system, which is common. So as a, a bootloader, which is actually, this is not bound to any hardware platform or not bound to any uh, real-time operating system. So in the sense, like this can be ported uh, on top for any particular autosys. So this is hardware independent as well as the operating system independent uh, secure bootloader. So when I say secure bootloader, it does various other things other than software update or software installation itself. So what it does is actually like verifying the image uh, in terms of uh, signature verification and handling the encryption part and decryption part of this. So these things also handled by MCU boot. It's like chain loading of an image 
uh, after verifying the image uh, or after checking the integrity of the image. So actually, there was a talk uh, earlier uh, on Monday by David, uh, Mr. David Brown, about the security aspects. Maybe you can uh, go and check it already. So MCU Boot also supports multiple boot image support. So uh, what what is like multi image support here means? Say for example, an SOC comes with Cortex M, ARM Cortex M4 and as well as ARM Cortex M33 together, and then two of these. Uh, course needs to run independent software. Uh, in such cases, MCU boot supports also the multi-boot, multi-image boot uh, chain loading of the images located. So this is, uh, there was a talk already in 2018 by David Brown again, so we can refer to this talk. So then the last and most important part for this talk is about software update. So the most heavy lifting work of the software installation after the after downloading the image into the primary storage is actually done by mcu boot so that's why i call as heavy lifting of installation uh, by its operation is actually carried out by mcu boot so to start with how really the memory is organized or the partition of the memory is organized in the microcontroller so usually we have few kilobytes or maximum few megabytes of memory uh, as a primary storage medium in our microcontroller platforms. So this is this example is directly taken from the Freedom uh, NXP Freedom Development Kit uh, for partition layout. So here you can see the device tree in the left shows various partitions which is needed or basic partitions which is needed for the MCU boot to function. So assuming here we have a flash uh, node, which is which is a alias for actually the uh, non-volatile flash controller. I mean, uh, it comes under the flash controller again. So this is the flash controller, uh, which represents the memory of the um, built-in memory of the controller itself. So we have under which we need to create partitions based uh, on the needs. For example, we, we need to have like three partitions minimum or four partitions minimum uh, to have uh, over the air or software updatable uh, system. So here the first partition is actually the MCU boot itself. So this resides at offset zero, zero cross zero. So and then depends on the size of the MCU boot, we can define the size here as well. So this is like partitioning uh, the raw flash into multiple things. So, and then the important part is slot zero, uh, otherwise uh, called as primary slot, where the actual chain loading image needs to be located. So, one important thing here is MCU boot always tries or always boots the image from the primary slot. So, when it comes to the secondary slot, here slot one, it is meant for the purpose of software update uh, or used for the purpose of software update. For example, um, by means of some external mechanisms like uh, software downloading mechanisms like uh, Update Hub or Hawkbit, the new image will be downloaded into slot one and then it would be swapped or copied into slot zero. So when I say swapped or copied, this is like two different operation. So uh, in terms of copy, it overwrites slot zero with the image which is actually um, downloaded into slot one by replacing the content in slot zero. And when the, the other way of doing is actually swapping. How to swap the image here? That's why we have a additional partition called scratch. Uh, one can imagine a simple example of uh, swapping of variables in C for int A is equal to 10, int B is equal to 20, and then swapping the values between A and B using a temporary variable C. So just assign uh, the a value of A to C and then replace it with uh, B. So this is how the swap works. So the overall picture is like copying the image from one partition to another, but using the swap uh, scratch partition here. So that's, that's the purpose of scratch partition in this case. So next is uh, how the image needs to be organized uh, so that MCU boot can understand the image and then 
chain load the image from the primary partition. So, so the, the image which is flashed or loaded into slot zero will contain the image itself, that's the code section, and also it contains a header which represents the size of the image and how much length it got and what is the sign uh, key which is used and so on and so forth. So these all information, we are not going to detail it now because we are not explaining about the security aspects of the MCU boot, but instead we are speaking about the software update aspects of the MCU boot. So the most important part for software update in this case is the trailer section. So the memory region in the end of an image partition is called trailer which contains certain metadata information and this metadata is actually used by the MCU boot during booting every boot up. It's, it, it reads this metadata information and decides whether we need to swap the image from slot one to slot zero or just boot slot zero or we are middle of somewhere in the swapping operation and then we are interrupted with some X or Y reasons like uh, power failure or hardware failure and so on and so forth. So this metadata is uh, named as trailer, which is used by the MCU boot to decide the state of the uh, hardware or state of the software itself to boot from. So expanding this trailer, here we have swap status, which we will see in a moment. And we have the swap size, which will contain the total size of the image which needs to be swapped from slot one to slot zero in this case. So by having this information or inspecting this information, MCU boot decides whether it needs to resume some from somewhere else or it needs to start from the first, uh, from, start from scratch for swapping this image. And also we have swap info, which explains a swap type and so on and so forth. So it contains multiple things like swap type and as well as uh, swap number which we will see in a moment. So there is also a couple of other byte information, uh, uh, which we again see in the next uh, slide. And there is also a magic in the end of this uh, image slot. So jumping into the next. Okay, so in overall big, big picture, how MCU boot operates is like once we kickstart the target, it goes and check whether there is an uh, interrupted swap, which means like during the swap operation, uh, the target is power failed or rebooted again, or some X or Y reasons it resetted back and it, it was in the middle of the previous swap. It detects it by reading the metadata and see if there is an interruption. If so, then it will continue the previously left place or um, continue the swap operation from the previously left place. If there is no interrupted swap, but still there is a swap requested as a fresh new image which is downloaded in slot one, then it's gonna check the image, whether it's a valid image by checking the integrity signature, encryption part, and so on. And if there is a valid image which is found in slot one, it's gonna start the swap operation. Now I'm gonna share my screen to show how this swap altogether works. Again, this particular video or the animation is taken from um, YouTube, which is published by Mr. David Brown, Linaro. So I'm just gonna play this one. So here we have the left one is the image uh, slot one, so, sorry, slot zero, and then we have slot one, and then we have a scratch partition. So how the swap operation works is by first erasing the scratch partition, and then followed by, it's gonna create a create a trailer. This is the trailer which would be used by the primary slot now. So by it creates a fresh trailer, and also it the first step it copies a, a piece of um, image. Here I mean by piece of image is a sector of image from the flash. So this scratch partition itself is should be having enough storage memory to store the maximum uh, size of swappable 
sector. So assume we have 128 kilobytes of sector which needs to be swapped every for every single operation, then it, the swap, scratch partition should at least contain 128 kilobytes of memory. So it copies uh, a piece of uh, or sector of um, memory from the secondary slot and then it will mark a status here in the trailer saying it complete one of it completed it one operation and following it will move a piece the same piece of sector or the same amount of uh, content from the slot zero and then it moves to the into the slot one and then it marks the same information here uh, uh, in, in the trailer this way it tracks how or where exactly this web operation is currently being left out or currently being in function so it just continues the only thing now here is the swap itself uh, the, the trailer itself is moved to the end of the uh, slot zero and it continues until the whole images in the slot one is swapped back to slot zero so assume if it breaks in in between or power failure and the mcu boot boots again it detects the state of uh, where it exactly left by reading the trailer information here and then it resumes back from where it actually left so this this way it checks or works in a way that it doesn't break the device altogether so i'm just gonna stop this screen and i'm just gonna yeah so it's the same thing which is uh, repeated, uh, repeated here, just uh, in the ju just as in the uh, animation which you saw right now. So here you can see, so uh, the trailer is created and a piece of uh, image is copied from the slot one to the scratch area, and then it it is marked and then it continues. So this process will continue until the whole image from slot one is copied to slot zero. So this is how uh, the swap operation is actually being carried out. So to view in detail about the swap status itself, it keeps record for each and every sectors which have been copied from uh, slot one to the scratch and then scratch to until it completely swaps. It's like a three state information uh, during the swap operation from slot, slot one uh, to move to slot zero. So these state information will be maintained here in the swap status region of the trailer for each and every individual sectors. And then by reading this particular uh, memory uh, or in, in the metadata, it decides whether the swap operation is complete or it was left in the partial and then it needs to resume or it needs to boot the first image. So this is how it decides or MCU boot decides how to boot the new image and that's the swap operation actually so so there are uh, different types of swap here which we can see so as i said before it's not just only the uh, swap status which decides where exactly the swap is done or how to decide well, how to decide uh, mc boot decides whether it needs to continue the swap or uh, it needs to start the swap or it left in the between so this is decided by this table so where it needs to read the whole metadata of the trailer the magic uh, image okay whether it's copied done is done and so on and so forth so it decides different types based on reading the whole metadata information so so this one is meant for starting the swap as a fresh download but the previous one here we saw during the swap operation and stores this each and every sector this one is used for uh, interrupted swap for example a power failure and then it needs to resume it's from from where it actually left so this particular swap status is used for uh, the res resuming of the interrupted swap operation and this one is actually primarily decides whether it needs to start swapping or uh, from slot one to slot zero or it just needs to put the image in slot zero directly so this is the state which is needs to be provided 
or needs to be uh, given to the MCU boot when there is a new image is downloaded to the uh, slot one by the mediums like cockpit or so on and so forth. So after downloading the image, how we need to inform or how need to, how we need to uh, instruct the MCU boot that it there is a new image is done with set of APIs which is provided in Zephyr. For example, here we have boot underscore request underscore upgrade. So this in particular is used to request the request to write this bit flags to mark it as test or permanent. For example, if the flag permanent is written here, then it is actually gonna change the, or swap the image from slot one to slot zero and there is no test swap we will see in a moment what is actually a test swap and what is a permanent swap by examining in detail so quickly to jump back again to screen share so here i have a, a freedom development board with me uh, connected to my ethernet and then I'm, we just got nothing inside and then I'm gonna flash the MCU boot. And as you can see in the right side of the window, the MCU boot boots and and as there is no image in the slot zero, I just I just flashed MCU boot. There is no other image which is flashing internally. So it's just the MCU boot. So the, it just says um, unable to find the bootable image because there is no bootable image in the slot zero. To continue further on this. Yeah, so, so are this explains how actually the software uh, update is actually installed after downloading the image to slot one so uh, it's like after downloading our new version of the software into slot one then we need to inform the mcu boot by using the api and then reset the target so mcu boot reads the metadata information of both the slots zero and slot one and then it decides it needs to swap the image to slot zero but how do we get our new image into slot one? That explains the remaining part of the presentation now. So we have like few solutions available in Zephyr about how to download our new image or the next version of the image into the slot one partition. And we're gonna see one by one. So here, the first one which I'm gonna speak about is Update Hub. What is Update Hub? It's actually a cloud solution. And in as a cloud solution, we can manage the device or for software update from the cloud by uploading our new version of the image. And the device can either uh, download the new image by polling method or by manually reading or checking the server if there is a new image and then we can flash the new, new version of the image into slot one partition. So this solution is actually secure and also provides uh, total, um, a total solution for managing multiple devices, like having a rollout mechanisms for connecting all the devices to the internet and then uh, managing the solution or managing the OTA itself. So it, there is also a couple of versions like for community, for the developers to use with, and also there is an uh, enterprise edition, which can be used for uh, large scale devices, which is deployed on the field. Now I'm, in, I'm again gonna jump into my screen to see how Update Hub works. And we're gonna use this example. Here, I'm just uh, gonna flash the Update Hub example or Update Hub sample application, which is uh, as part of Zephyr, uh, into my slot zero because we don't have any image in slot zero so far. So before that, I'm just gonna show the Update Hub UI here. This is like a cloud uh, which is which is running in my 
local uh, server for now and which creates a cloud platform where you can upload your new image. So after you log in here, you can see like devices and rollout mechanisms which you can upload and then manage the device. And now I'm just gonna jump back to the console to flash this image here. So the one thing which I did uh, wrong now is like I just flashed the image which is not signed and then it uh, detects that the image in the primary slot is not valid because I, I flashed a blind image instead of the signed image. So how we can... Uh, I'm gonna flash the signed image and it's gonna put the signed image and it connect to the update hub server to uh, make the device visible. As you, as you can see, it now boots the image in the primary slot and it communicates uh, with the cloud and it says there is no update available because we didn't push any updates here in, the, in, in, in our update hub itself. So here you can see this new device is just populated after uh, starting this application here in the device. Now we're gonna just upload the new package which I already created with actually the different version or altogether a completely different application. I'm just gonna upload this package and there is also procedures like uh, in the in the Zephyr documentation you can find the how to create the package or new version of the package or how to uh, how to uh, upload or how to sign these things. So how, sign this uh, new image. Everything is part of the documentation already. So now, now I'm gonna create a rollout mechanism or rollout for this particular device. And the image which I just uploaded is um, version is 2.0. And I'm gonna create the rollout for this new device or new version of software. And I'm gonna start uh, this upload uh, process it's like the process is started and it says the operation is pending. Now I'm gonna run, uh, update hub run in my console of the device and it's gonna pull the new image and it says the new image is uh, downloaded and flashed successfully. And then it, you can uh, view the diff changes here as well in the cloud UI. So now I'm gonna reset the target And now you can see the new image is actually swapped as we uh, as we saw in our animation or in our slide previously. And then the new images new images copied back to the slot zero. And this is actually just a hello world application which is actually pushed from the cloud. So the new image is now flashed, and we can see this image is up and running. So once this is done. You, uh, th this based on the application, we need to notify the update hub server to say our update is done or failed accordingly, but haven't done anything relatively. So that means it's just rolling for or waiting for the status from the waiting for the status from the device itself. So by this, we can see like any number of devices which can be managed for um, for managing the software update itself. So. The remaining part here is actually exactly the same thing which we shown. Uh, I just have these slides because I was not sure whether screen share was will work or will not work. So it's the same thing which we which you can see like the new image will be downloaded and then once you have the new image downloaded, you, you see the uh, status change in the cloud UI. So that's about the update hub and how it exactly works. So this particular solution works directly by connecting uh, your device to the internet. By uh, now I connected with ethernet and connected to the internet and then it uploads and downloads the image uh, over ethernet or any form of uh, internet medium. So maybe Wi-Fi or modem, which can be also together used, can be used in these cases. So the next solution which we can see now is MCU manager. So 
this solution is uh, actually developed by or by Apache or uh, for for their autos like minute autos and it does also have the porting uh, to Zephyr as like MCU boot this is not hardware dependent uh, or operating system dependent so there is a port for uh, there can be a port for any any number of uh, real time operating system so here we have a port for Zephyr and we're going to see how this works with the Zephyr uh, OTA or software update itself so as an architecture point of view how exactly this is layered is it can address any form of uh, physical mediums except the management layer itself all the rest is actually modular or pluggable uh, based on the use cases by mean i pluggable i here mean that uh, today we have bluetooth shell and udp way of communicating towards the uh, devices and server uh, this we can assume like a client server model uh, it can connect between clients and server using bluetooth or shell or by using the uart connection or udp and future it can be extended further into further uh, communication mediums like wi-fi uh, or lora or orf or so on and so forth this layer is modular so the simple management management protocol by itself is modeled in such a way that, that it can be extended to any communication mediums here so this management layer here actually takes commands from the server and handles the commands or forwards the command to the respective command manager here in in this case for software update we need to speak about image management and the image management takes care to uh, respond back with your response like uploading the image or downloading the image and then uh, verifying the image and so on and so forth so this is like a commands and it is managed by the image management layer itself so this whole thing between the management and the communication is actually uh, attributed by cbor uh, a standard and uh, this this is like a binary format and uh, this formatted data is uh, examined by the management layer and forwarded back to the image management layer so that uh, in so that way it manages the uh, images in the devices now i'm, I'm going to again share my screen now in, in now i'm going to use my uh, st microelectronics discovery board uh, with me for this particular example so here you can see uh, the device got nothing uh, i didn't flash anything in this into this image to start with uh, uh, we need to flash the mcu boot itself in the primaries uh, in the initial 0x0 memory and then we need to further uh, need to flash the, the application itself in the primary slot and then we need to download the image uh, from uh, from using the mcu mgr use case or mcu mgr client to uh, to the secondary slot so now i flash the mcu uh, boot as like before and then then i'm just gonna uh, flash the um, smp server which is a simple management protocol server and the device acts as a server and we will control from my raspberry pi as a client uh, to speak with the device and whether to upload the new image or query the image so on and so forth again i did the same mistake sorry uh, instead of flashing the signed image i did flash the unsigned image Okay, so now I did flash the si signed image into the primary slot and then it just boots into the primary slot. Okay. 
so there is something wrong with uh, with the sample or of I'm going to try if it doesn't work. Maybe I will just jump back to the presentation where I have the same things uh, explained in slides. Right. Unfortunately, I, there is something wrong with my demo. Maybe I can jump back to the presentation to show how it actually functions. So assuming uh, the device itself is flashed with the simple management protocol server application, then from the uh, client side or client part, uh, we can query the device over Bluetooth, for example, or if the communication connection medium itself is like serial UART, then it can be controlled with serial UART, or recently there is support for UDP as well, it can be connected with UDP so on. So here there are few image management commands, as I said before. So we have the image management uh, control, which handles multiple operations like uh, listing the image or uh, uploading the new image or verifying the new image and so on. So this is like a couple of commands which is explained. How, what is the image which is listed in the, uh, or total number of images which is uh, part of the image, uh, part of the device. Here we have slot zero with uh, image which is currently running and there is no image in the slot one. That's what we're gonna download or upload from here. Once it's uploaded, you can list this new image and also you can confirm this image by um, calling as confirm. So what is the state which is previously in, in MCU? Well, by speaking about MCU boot, and I say state or flags here immediately after uh, the new image which is downloaded into slot one, this is marked as pending because this is like a test image uh, uh, to make sure that this image is swapped back to slot zero and it boots fine and it is not breaking the device or it's not failing with some error in the software so this way it's like we are testing it for once and then confirming it as a next step from either from the software itself or from the mcu manager client itself so this can be managed from either the application or from the client directly controlling the device so here the state is uh, mentioned as or um, uh, tagged as pending which means this is a test start and then during the next boot it tests and swaps the image as like uh, as we saw like in update hub cases it's just gonna swap the image and we see this image is swapped and if you see this image is booted fine then we can confirm the image in the primary slot which means like the image which is we which we downloaded now so by calling it as confirm from the mcu mgr client or in the application itself or in the binary itself, in Zephyr application itself, we can mark this as a good good image. So if this image is marked good, then it is like from the next boot, it would uh, start the image directly. Uh, if there is, if this image is not confirmed, then as MCU boot during booting, uh, booting of the image in the primary slot, it examines this metadata in the, uh, trailer and decides whether it needs to boot this uh, slot image in slot zero or if it's not confirmed then it would reverse back saying swaps back the image from slot one to slot zero again saying this image is not confirmed so this way the device is not bricked with bad software and it is uh, a nice way of doing 
to have an uh, an outbreak device in the field okay so there is also uh, other way of doing software update which is actually with can open which is recently added in zephyr which can be used for uh, as like mcmgr or um, with update hub can open can also be used for software update but we are not going to uh, speak about it now but as an overall solution what is the limitation which we uh, or what is the thing which is really missing in this aspects so we have a solution called M mcu manager which takes care for local radio and a couple of cases using the cbor attributes managing the images and there is also a solution which is based on update hub when the device is connected to the internet but there is no uh, unified solution which is currently available in zephyr for handling both of these cases together assuming uh, for an example of sw update as an unified solution which handles uh, in linux at least it handles the image uh, download from hawkbit or local server or multiple other cases like usb download and so on and so forth so this is like one unified solution which is not um, available in zephyr to address all the use cases at least in terms of internet of things we have uh, assuming a case where um, 10 to 15 devices connected in, inside an industry and connected in a start topology towards the gateway which could be linux and updating such solution or such devices which is connect not connected to the internet but connected to the centralized gateway uh, is a tedious job or the solutions is uh, which we discussed so far doesn't address this problem so this is uh, this is the current state of the zephyr implementations so how we gonna extend this solution is by having a different architecture called z update and so far the state of z update is not complete at least which is not yet pushed to the mainline zephyr which we develop uh, started developing an, uh, a year ago and which is still ongoing and we are addressing various aspects of the limitations and problems by having this particular architecture called z update to address all possible form of uh, software updates whether it's like a start topology connecting to uh, toward a centralized gateway in an internet of things topology or it's just a single device connecting directly to the internet or it's a single device just lying in a local radio like bluetooth or lora and so forth so this is uh, this this particular architecture addresses or influenced directly from uh, the solution sw update in linux so by having a modular solution for handling the download infrastructure by by, by having a download handler uh, which is connected towards the zephyr z update core and the other side uh, for of the z update by flashing the image to the primary flash or uh, if it is an not a binary update it could be a configuration update from the server or key management change of key for the security or change of uh, x or y information which which doesn't uh, always necessarily go to the flash primary flash but also it can go to the spinar flash or other storage mediums as well so this modular architecture which we have right here is handling multiple other forms of solutions like cockpit update hub and it can extend towards other solutions like sw update here i say sw update because when we have a start topology in an internet of things a network where the zephyr gateway uh, uh, or sorry linux gateway lives in the center and connected to all the uh, zephyr nodes or the zephyr devices in a local radio and uh, the sw update can download the image directly from its source and updates itself in the linux machine or updating the gateway itself and also we can control the software update for all the client devices which is connected in this network which is actually zephyr by having this z update so by having an additional handler in sw update this is directly possible but also not just sw update but also with other solutions like mender and so on so this this solution or this architecture is designed in such a way that it can be modular to any form of further uh, software update mechanisms so by the device itself can be connected to the internet 
or it is not connected to the internet, it can be managed in such a way uh, for uh, both in connecting to the internet cases and as well as non-connecting to the internet internet cases like local radios. So, so far we started uh, implementing the core part of the Z update architecture and it's still under underway, but we started with Hawkbit as an example, which is again another uh, device management or cloud management solution for the software update mechanism. So something like something similar to Update Hub. But this update uh, Hawkbit case is as an example, we use to uh, bind together with Z update and it worked well. So this, this is how it is organized where the cloud infrastructure is running any solution for this case is Hawkbit and it connects towards the internet and then we connect the device directly to the internet. So this could be connecting directly to the internet uh, in, in this case, like uh, the freedom development board connecting directly to the internet and pulling the image uh, from the Hawkbit server, but managing the soft software uh, update, not by directly flashing into the uh, spine or, or not by directly handling it, but by having a download manager uh, handling the downloading part and flashing with the uh, storage manager uh, from the Z update core itself. So we started with the solution and this is like partially complete and it's working. But for now, the mainline version of the uh, Z update is not yet complete, but it just have the solution for the Hawkbit itself directly. So maybe before the time runs out, I can just quickly try showcase or show the example of how Hawkbit works. So as like the um, Update Hub solution, we have a Hawkbit server where you can log in to the server and see, uh, upload the image and roll, manage the rollout mechanisms. Now I'm just gonna, sorry, let's forget to share my screen. So here I have the Hogbit uh, server logged in. Maybe you can log in back again. So here we can manage the devices for the rollout management as like uh, Update Hub. But from the device point of view, I'm just gonna uh, reflash the device with some simple example to start it from fresh. So now we have the simple hello world example, and then I'm just gonna flash like as before uh, um, the MCU boot first into the target. Now we have MCU boot. Okay, so I think I ran into some problem and we don't, we are running out of time. Maybe I can just show this uh, case directly in the presentation itself. So we, here we manage the devices, upload the image directly in the update hub as like uh, in, in the Hawkbit as like update hub. And the, in the device side, you can see the image will be downloaded into the sec uh, secondary slot and then it will be replaced by the MCU board during uh, during the software update. But what is the difference between here is like it's managed by Z update infrastructure instead of the direct uh, update mechanisms uh, as like before we see in the uh, update hub and so on. So this particular architecture which we see 
uh, as an example here after the update the image is changed and then we see the state of the status of the image to uh, uh, successful as like update hub as well so so far we have uh, the solution for uh, z update is currently underway but it's not yet complete but not yet complete in the sense it is having the base infrastructure ready but not yet uh, uh, covering most of the local radios like lora and so on this needs to be extended further so this is not yet done and we are going we are currently working on it and then planning to move to this uh, zephyr mainline as well so this solution is flexible in such a way that it, such a way that it can be extended to any form of cloud solution like update hub or hockpit or any other solutions which are, which we can upload the image directly and then also handle the local radio cases and also the um, linux ota agents like sw update or mender or so on so that's the major part which i want to speak that's it for now if you have any questions i will jump into the q a part and see if i can address a couple of questions before moving into this slack so uh, mahendran asked uh, where does the key store stored so uh, in case of mcu boot it, it is directly embedded as part of mcu boot itself um uh, but this can also reside in the key store region like for a, a separate memory region which can be part of an external chip like tpm or it can be part of uh, any other secure devices then the next question the there support for three images current update and recovery yes there is support for recovery as well uh, but we haven't discussed this particular part in in this talk specifically to just uh, uh, make things simple to understand the swap operation and how update works but there is yes there is support for recovery as part of mcu boot and there is a next question what if what if the only transport available for uploading is ble and is the transport catered for I'm not sure if I understand correctly. What if the only transport available for uploading is BLE? Okay, so I don't think there would be a problem in uploading with BLE uh, in case of MCU manager or other mediums as well. I think uh, that's the questions which I can see in the slides right now. I'm not sure if I have to scroll. Okay. Okay, so is there any Zephyr of Z update documentation code available online yet? Yes, it's available uh, in our repository, but um, as I said before, it's like in, in, in terms of early development internally, uh, and uh, we just finished the Hawkbait uh, part into the mainline part, and it will be soon merged in like in, in the coming days. And yes, the Z update part documentation and as well as the functionality is not yet in the mainline, which, and, uh, which will be soon available. Maybe I can say in, 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 in next month because we have already a stable uh, solution running. Sure, so thank you very much for joining and uh, I will be ready to take questions directly from Slack uh, from now and then uh, we already run out of time, uh, crossed our limit. So thank you very much again and uh, have a nice day. Stay healthy, thank you.